Hi folks, and thanks for checking out my video. This video is going to be on an HP touchpad running the Android operating system. Before we get into the touchpad, I'll show you some of the accessories and what the box looks like for the touchpad. Here we have a touchstone charging dock. This is a wireless dock for the HP touchpad. Basically, it allows you to just put the HP touchpad here. If you notice, there is no... Uh, adapter down here to sit in and you just lay it on the touchpad and it will start charging. Really, really happy with this because for a long time I have been hoping for a tablet that when connected to power can be on and not drain the battery. In other words, you plug it in at 100%, you leave it on and it stays at 100%. It doesn't slowly go down. I've hoped to find a particular device that uh, would do that, and even though I had the HP touchpad connected via USB <coughs> to a laptop for some time, if you leave it on, it will eventually start draining the battery slowly. With this particular touchstone dock, it doesn't. It stays pegged at 100, and I'm really happy to see that. Below that, we'll have a folio case over here. This particular case allows the touchpad to charge in the touchstone dock. The charge will go through it, so this is an approved case uh, for use with that. Uh, really nice little case, as you can see over here. It has some different folding levels. And uh, opens like that. Now, it has a piece of Velcro that allows it to connect back over here, but if you just have it closed, the flap stays uh, unlocked or unlatched. And I kind of thought that was a little bit of an oversight. I figured if you close the lid, it should have maybe just a tiny piece of Velcro to keep it closed if you want it, but for some reason they didn't do that. And here is the actual HP touchpad box. Now, the history for the HP touchpad is that it runs WebOS. Uh, HP bought out Palm, and now HP has a bunch of devices, uh, the touchpads, the Palm smartphones that all run WebOS. And similar to iOS, the uh, basically the operating system works on both their tablets and the phones. Now, when you unbox a touchpad, there's a couple things that you can expect in the box. It'll come with a wall charger, and it will also come with a USB cable. And I'll open the box here and show you what else it comes with. It comes with a cleaning cloth, too, which is extremely handy because these touchpads are very glossy. Both the back of them and the glass is very similar to the iPads. So they're, they get pretty glossy, and they're also uh, very smooth, so they get pretty fingerprinty. So I'm just going to lean in here. Here's the side panel that has the USB cable and the wall charger. Over here, it's uh, funny, when you open this, and it says, now comes the fun part, <laughs> it's not really that amazingly fun. It's just basically the instruction book for it. And uh, back here is the cleaning cloth. I'm going to go ahead and keep that separate. So, just basically a uh, instruction manual here in this part of the box. Nothing particularly fancy. I was a little excited when it says now for the fun part. I didn't think instructions were going to be the fun part. For the further history of the uh, the touchpads, basically, uh, HP was producing them for a while. If you remember the commercials of people holding up touchpads in front of their face, and um, actresses and you know actors and, and media people, and they had their they were scrolling through the tablet in front of their face, and they were using the search function. They had it shown a bunch of things, and at the end of each of the videos, basically, the celebrity's face was on the touchpad. I, I think Russell Brandt was one of the more uh, famous people that they had in those commercials. Uh, that was for this particular device, basically. And uh, WebOS is the default OS that you get on an HP touchpad. There's a 16 and a 32 gigabyte model. 
and they went between three and four hundred dollars when they were active, but HP suddenly stopped producing them. And when they did, they did something really crazy and said, okay, we're having a fire sale on them. They're all going to be like $99. So if you're really lucky, you scarfed up one of these amazing tablets for a cheap price of $99, which is unheard of. Unfortunately, you can't really get them at that price anymore, but if you look around, you'll still get them for considerably cheaper than when they were an active tablet. And um, that's when I happened to get mine. Now, if you remember in some of my earlier videos, I was actually running a e-reader that I converted, well, it was already converted into an Android tablet. That was my good old friend, the Nook Color here. Got Antutu Benchmark up, and as you can see, it scored a 2535 on the rating. I'm using this for a comparison between the two devices. So, here was my old Nook Color running Android. Got it overclocked to 1100 megahertz with 600 minimum. And up here we have the HP touchpad. Now, as you can see on that wallpaper, it's a steampunk wallpaper. Uh, love the thing. I think it's great. If you double tap on it, it changes the background colors and themes. It's got a blue, green, purple, two reds, and it even has this older film style one. That's a pretty nice widget up top. Over here is my market screen. I've got Evernote up top, and I've got some markets down at the bottom. Aptoid, the App Rain Sinker, Black Market, App Store, and the Google Play, which is the old Android market. Uh, this is pretty much my main screen over here. We've got a link to the front-facing camera, contacts, Falcon browser, clock, We've got a battery widget over here, and you can see it's pegged at 100. Uh, this is my second favorite home screen. Basically, it's where I've got all my games, and I've got the glass widgets that I was running on the Nook up top, giving me an RSS feed from Wired. Now, what really, really sold me on this particular tablet, when I started playing around with it, I'll bring up Gun Brothers. Gun Brothers played amazingly. I could not believe how well this game played on this device. I've got it on the iOS and I have it on my uh, Nook Color, you know, and it plays pretty solid on those devices. But on this thing, it played like you would expect it to play on a PC. And uh, because of the screen settings on it, if you notice, I have the soft bar up, the soft keys bar. On the Nook Color, you have to make that bar go away, otherwise it overlays uh, some parts of the game. If you make the bar go away, you have to close out of Gun Brothers by hitting the Nook end, and then you have to use the Task Manager to close it, kind of like control the leading on a PC and bringing up the Task Manager. You go ahead here and bring up the store. I know I have it uh, on the side, basically. But if you can see the guy bouncing around over there, he's at full speed, there's no lag whatsoever. Scrolling through is going pretty good. Uh, the game plays fantastically, and you can leave the soft key bar up so you can cancel it like that. On the Nook, you have to close that bar, otherwise it overlays parts of the game and you have to essentially like control the lead out of the game to close it. So, show you guys a little bit of my applications over here. Uh, one tap clean cache, pretty good for cleaning caches. Uh, we have two clock programs that I like. I love these AmbiScience ones. Uh, Angry Birds, uh, some different live wallpapers, and two to benchmark, which I'll bring up. Now, if you remember my Nook Color, was in the twos. This one is 5087. So as you can see, this is scoring um, a lot better than the Nook Color, which was pretty much about half this. And my Thunderbolt scores at that kind of level too, so it's about that powerful. Uh, similar to the Nook Color, some games will, uh, because this is not supposed to be an Android device. 
I've had really good luck with the market. If I can't get anything on the market, I'll get it on uh, Black Mart or Aptoid. But pretty much every game that I've tried to run on here has done a fantastic job of running, with the exception of Dead Space. Dead Space says that uh, the it's not compatible with this particular device, even though uh, you can force it. Basically, you have to edit build prop and tell it that it's something else. Um, but everything else on this has been running fantastically. And I've got Crackle on here, which is like uh, Netflix. It runs Flash. You can do Google Plus, G Tasks, uh, Google IP, Order and Chaos, Radiant, fantastic Space Invaders type of game. Really great humor and Radiant. I recommend it to anybody. Got uh, Google Plays Music. And uh, a bunch of other things on here. So far, I, I love it completely. I, I have no real reason to go back to the Nook Color. Now, in a comparison between the WebOS and uh, the Android operating system, Android on this device takes about a minute to launch. If you were to go to WebOS, it takes about two minutes. So that right there is a good reason to take your HP touchpad and bring it over to the Android operating system. It's, it's a lot quicker. Of course, there's more accessibility for it. The ROM community for the HP touchpad is really good. I would say it is more robust than the Nook Color community. And uh, it is about as popular as the Thunderbolt. Probably a little less, though. The Thunderbolt ROMs have a pretty huge selection. And the HP Touchpad I would put second behind that, and I would put the Nook Color third. This is Ice Cream Sandwich, which is the newest operating system from Android. Basically, it's a uh, Android 4. Honeycomb was on a lot of these touchpads before Ice Cream Sandwich came out. Now, Ice Cream Sandwich is basically taking over as a unifying operating system between the tablets and the phones that can run Android. So any new tablet and several of the new Android phones now will be running Ice Cream Sandwich. So you can see the performance on the benchmark was really good. It's very high. The scrolling over here, as you can see, is really smooth. It's really fast. Uh, this one happened to have two launchers on it. I'm running the ADW launcher. I can go over to the Ice Cream Sandwich launcher and looks like that. As you can see, the, the buttons down at the bottom change. I really haven't been working with this particular desktop, so it doesn't really have anything. It moves a battery icon up there. And of course, you can use whatever launcher you want. You can use, uh, you can use the stock launchers on here. You could go to something like Go Launcher, which is really robust. And by comparison, we'll come over here to my uh, Thunderbolt. And this is the stock launcher that I have for my ROM, which is Thunderstick Gen 2. But I also have the option of going over to Go Launcher from HTC Sense. And the what I like a little bit more about Go Launcher is the fact that it has home screen rotation. So there you go, there's my home screen properly rotated under the Go Launcher, but HTC Sense doesn't do it unless you edit a file, so sometimes I love Go Launcher a little bit better when I have it docked. So that's it. That's my video on the HP Touchpad. You can see what you get included in the box, see a couple accessories for it. You can see what it's like to run Android. I uh, booted over to HP WebOS, but that will unfortunately uh, be too long for this particular video. So I'll go ahead and close it out that if you can get one of these, either the 16 or the 32, go ahead and try to get your hands on them in the 150 to 225 range and you got yourself a great little tablet that's pretty fast and I would say competitive with the iPad. 
Thanks a lot, guys, and have yourselves a good day.